What's going on, beautiful people? And thank you for tuning in and watching. I appreciate your appreciation. And I love every single one of you guys because you're me and I'm you and we're just looking. We're one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. It's the same shit. We're the same thing. So, I'm going to talk about a predicament here that you might find yourself in at some point or might have already found yourself in it or will or have or maybe now. Is it okay to steal? Is it ever okay to steal? Is there like an absolute rule, an absolute law? You know, like in the Ten Commandments, thou shall not steal. You know, thou shall not steal. So hearing that, you think never steal. It's an absolute moral rule, moral law. And it seems like a pretty good law, doesn't it? I mean, you kind of resonate with it when someone says thou shall not steal. It's almost like you feel like it's almost an innate thing in you to be like, that's, yeah, you shouldn't fucking steal. You should, absolutely shouldn't steal. You know, it's just like, I don't know if it's an innate thing. I don't know if it's a conditioned thing, but it seems like societies, mostly all around the globe, agree, you know, within each society, there's this agreement that stealing is bad, shouldn't steal, right? It, it just seems like this is the moral thing to do. Uh, and... Now here I am to discuss, to play the devil's advocate on this. I, I actually have no answer if you're looking for an answer and I don't know. That's my answer is I don't know. If you want to cut this video short, I don't know if it's okay to steal or not. I'm just going to play the devil's advocate here and provide different points of views. Let's say I am living in a small village. Say the village has a thousand people, right? And there is one person there that has so much money and has basically all the wealth of the village. You know, he's got the resources, he's got it all. And he knows how to make things happen. He knows how to take the resources, make food off of it, give people food, uh, give himself food and then make money, make profit off of it. However, he chooses to manipulate the, his access to resources. And let's say that there is out of a thousand people, a hundred people that are starving. Their survival is at stake. And for whatever reason, we're not here to judge that person that has all the resources for whatever reason. That person is not taking care of the survival needs of the hundred people. Let's say out of the thousand, most of the people are okay, they're surviving. But let's say a hundred of those, 10% of those are starving. And if they don't get food, if they don't get shelter, if they don't get water, they will die. And you know that person has all the resources, all the wealth, and he knows about the hundred people that are starving, but he chooses not to give them food, not to give them resources. And now their survival is at stake. And you, the Robin Hood in this case, find yourself in this interesting dilemma, interesting predicament, where you have really good skills as a thief. You picked it up along the way. You know how to get in that guy's mansions or whatever, his castle. If this is a medieval situation scenario, I don't know why. Just let's pretend it's medieval. You know how to get into this guy's castle. You know how, you know, the ins and the outs. You know how to get up, get some food, get some resources and give them to the hundred people. You just know how to do it without getting caught. And you tell yourself, well, <sighs> Should I steal from this guy? Should I give these hundred people what they need because their survival depends on it? Or 
thou shalt not steal applies here. I shouldn't steal from this guy, even though he his survival is no longer at stake. You know, the guy, if, you know, you trying to make the moral judgment here and you say, well, this guy is surviving. He doesn't need, I can, I can take all, like a bunch of resources from him, steal a bunch of resources from him, give them to the hundred people and he's fine. He like he's fine. He's not. He he's fine. He's gonna be okay. He's he's got more than he needs. Whereas now I've saved a hundred people's lives. So you can think of it as I'm delivering justice. I'm being the just hand of God. That's one way of looking at it. Or you can look at it and say, well, but you're still stealing from someone. This belongs. This property. These resources belong to a person. At which point now we have to also question property and ownership and validity. I mean, why does this guy own this land? Why does this guy own the resources? What kind of laws allow him to? And are these cultural laws? Are they rightful? Are they valid? Are they actually useful and helpful for society that this one person has because of some papers that say legally this guy has all these resources and all these lands. So because of a piece of paper now he he has ownership to this and I can't steal from him. So now you question that. And now, now I don't fucking know. Now there's too many variables here to, to, to take into account, right? Way too many variables. Because if we're going to go around question the, the, the concept of ownership, now, well, now we're, we're into communism and socialism. And I, I want to play no part in any political movement or I, I don't want to affiliate myself with anything. And I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I'm providing different different perspectives and the other perspective I want to provide is if we are to look at life as this divine order you know everything is in order and everything is always just the way it needs to be then perhaps that guy is playing God is playing is, is the hand of God that controls the resources and the wealth and gives them to the people that deserve it, quote unquote. And maybe maybe the, the other hundred people, right? The other hundred people that are starving, even though you might look at it and like, this is fucking terrible. Maybe they have it coming to them. Maybe that's karma. Maybe they're just playing their, their, their role in karma. And that's their karma right now. So who am I to interfere in, in the flow of life? Or you can look at it from another perspective and say, well, maybe God sent me. Maybe I'm here to interfere with this situation and change it. And you see how fucked up this can go. Like, if <laughs> this, <laughs> this is the predicament I always find myself in in life. Is I look at things from different perspectives. And I'm like, this is right. And this is right. And this is right. And this is right. They're all right. They're all perfectly valid. They're all perfectly... Uh, just in a way right and and they all perfectly make sense it makes sense that the hundred people that are starving are just living out their karma and maybe they've starved off somebody in a past life and now they're paying it back and that's why the guy for whatever reason is not giving them the food and giving them the shelter and what they need it makes perfect sense on the other hand it makes perfect sense that hey god sent me here I'm God's just hand. I'm playing the role in this, in this, because it's all drama. You know, the whole thing is a fucking drama. Life is a drama and, and we're just actors. So maybe God sent me here. I'm the actor. I'm the player here that is going to deliver justice to this unjust situation. And it's going to uh, distribute wealth equally, right? It's, so that makes sense too. You know, that makes sense. It just makes just as much sense as the idea that the other hundred people are just living out their karma. You know, it, it makes this perfect, makes perfect sense. We have an unjust situation here. And I ha I'm so inclined to just take steal from that guy, the rich guy, and give to these hundred starving people. And maybe that inclination and that urge that I have within me is that divine spark 
I'm here sent to deliver justice. And I'm, it's not even me. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I am letting the force do its thing through me to deliver justice. Just as valid as saying, hey, it is what it is. Who am I to interfere in the flow of life? These people are starving. If everything is in perfect divine order, then I shouldn't really interfere. That also makes sense. It's like, so what the fuck? You know, then what the fuck? Then what the fuck? What the actual fuck do you do? I don't know. That's why I told you I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. Well, maybe I do have an answer. <laughs> and this is cheesy as fuck, but... It, I know the answer to any predicament in life is love. It's love. And... I don't know how exactly you would go on about it in this case, but I do know there has to be some sort of a loving solution to this. Whatever your action does, whether you decide, choose to interfere or you choose not to interfere, is that you keep all sides that are playing this drama in your heart because you understand that this is all God playing itself so the person that rich person that you see in front of you that seems like the bad guy in this case and is hogging all the resources and 100 people are starving and you know that guy is just like you there is another being in there and if you look at that guy's eyes no matter how fucking bad he is and how evil he is there is a being in there and that being is the same being as you that being is that loving awareness. And so when you look at his eyes, you are looking at yourself. And in the same way, those hundred people that are starving, if you look in their eyes, you will see the exact same thing that you see in that rich guy that is hogging the resources. You will see that loving, that being, that loving awareness and we're just playing out these roles. Now, whichever role you decide to take in this case, whichever choice you make in any predicament like that, here's now my wacky perspective on it. Not my answer, just my wacky perspective. Whatever choice you make in that, so let's say right now I'm in that predicament and I choose to steal from that guy or I choose not to steal from that guy and not interfere and let this drama play itself out. Whatever decision you make is the right decision. How do I know? Because you're making it. That's the Tao. That's the will of the Tao. That's the will of the gods. That's the will of cosmic love. If it's happening, then it's perfect. Then it's the right thing. Meaning if you were sitting here and said, okay, I'm stealing from that guy. I'm taking all his resources. He's still going to be okay. He's, I mean, he's got so much. He can feed like 100,000 people. I'm, I'm taking from him, giving to 100. If you make that choice in that, in that moment, that's the right choice. Because it's happening. And that's the Tao. The Tao is always right. The Tao is always perfect. If it's happening, then it is. It just is. And if you make the choice to let it play itself out, and not interfere, then that's also the right choice because it's happening and because the choice is being made. And that's the will of the Tao. You see, uh, that's, I think, my ultimate, my answer to this, you know, is <laughs> whatever choice you make is going to be the right choice regardless. So that's, that's what I have to say about this. God bless you all. I, uh, I love, I love, I love, <laughs> I love that life is full of paradox because it's just fun. And I love life and all its intricacy, intricate ways and delicate balance of yin and yang. I love it. I love being alive. I love this fucking thing. With all the drama that comes with it. Fuck it. God bless you all. 
I love every single one of you guys, but don't forget to subscribe or you're gonna sleep with the fishes. And that would be the right thing to do. So, subscribe.